scriptures. He talks about walking the bridle. Um, David Bible verses. He talks about walking the bridle with the Lord. And you know what? It matters to me how I walk in my house. Because you know what? Brother Queen might forgive me, but if God can forgive me, it matters to me. Right. There's nobody looking. There's nobody seeing, but it matters to me because it matters what he thinks about me. Does it matter to me about my neighbor? Yes, it does. And most of all, does it matter to me about my family? Yes, it does. I do not never want my family to have to tell or exaggerate something that is not so. I do not want my children or my grandchildren to do that. Right. I want them to always be able to tell the truth right. about my community and other things because they know that better than anybody else. Right. I want to be trusted. I want to live and walk the right and explore the Lord. Are you perfect? <laughs> no. No. But I want to be. I want to be what He wants me to be. Right. I, I am not out to. To do great wonders. I don't have great things, you know what I mean? I just want to be obedient to Him. I just want to listen to Him. And I don't have a key to I just want to be what He wants me to be. Because if I am, and if I'm obedient, He's going to bless me, and He'll bless the other people around me. But it's when we we go through things, and sometimes, even though you're going through something, always try to bless somebody else. Uh, a lot of people are able to uh, smile through the trial. Some people cry through the trial. But I'm just saying, let's take inventory of ourselves. You know, Joseph had to take inventory of himself. Okay, we're going on over to Potiphar's wife. Joseph was doing real good. Thanks for being blessed. Here comes the devil. Identify. Identify. She thought because that she was the king's wife. Joseph in an undecent relationship with her. Yeah. And you know what? She knew. Yeah. I was reading a little bit of history on this. She knew what she was doing was wrong. Yes, she and she knew from that book of, I can't remember, the book of something or other that, that they dealt with. I'll try to, I didn't get a fact stain made this week. But from that book, if you've done that, you were in danger right. of hell. And she knew that. But see, it didn't matter. 
But you know what? The one thing, his love for God. Our love for God ought to keep us from all unclean things. It right. ought to keep our ears out of trouble, our eyes out of trouble. It ought to keep our feet out of trouble, and it ought to keep our hands out of trouble. We need to I, we need to respect one another. He respected Paul. He respected them around him. He he just had that in him. And 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 you when you respect somebody, you don't want to hurt them. Do you me and Brother Queen has always said this all these years that we've been married. So love walks a hand in hand with respect. That's right, right. And when our son was growing up and him being a boy, uh, I always told him he was maybe eight or nine years old, you know. And I told him, I said, son. I said, if you can't respect a girl, if, if right. you don't respect herself and you can't respect her, I said, you've got no business being around her. Right. And it's the same thing in the church. If there's somebody in here and they don't respect uh, their self, then it's hard to, you know, we have to go on and we have to pray for them and stuff like that. But we're to respect Brother Bob. He's the pastor of this church. God didn't send nobody here to be pastor but Brother Robert. He spoke that years ago to Brother Robert. And, and we as people, you know, God speaks to us to come to H-E-L-P. But that favor. And then, yeah, not only respect for others, but respect for yourself. I always tell my children, and I'm going to use myself probably a lot. I always tell my children when they were in school, I don't just jump up, uh, uh, going out the door with my helmet on and my house shoes on, or going to the school to check on my children. Because you know what? Before I get out the front door, they're going to be asked, Sam, what kind of child at home does that child live in? And I respect my children more than that. No, it's not about dress. No, no, it ain't. She looks on the ignorant appearance. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. We're to respect ourselves. Just like Joseph respected himself. He would not fall under the knee that that, that uh, uh, attempt to to be uh, defiled and probably be blunt, you know, and never never went on down the line to come at the end of the of the of strain event to where he could still have favor with God. If if we live godly, you're going to suffer persecutions just like him. And I will tell you, and I don't want to bust your bubble, but that stuff goes on in the house of God. Yeah. I'm telling you, this sure as I'm standing here today, there was some woman come through that door after Brother Rock. Maybe after Brother Lord, but I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it time and time and time and time again. That's the person. You say, well, Sister Queen, that ain't going to happen. Watch and see what I'm telling you. That's the way the devil works. But if we live godly, we're going to suffer persecution. Galatians 5 11. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Even at our lowest point. Now, how do you think that he fails? How do you really think? How could you imagine some woman in here coming up to you? How would you feel? Some men, how would you feel? Even at your lowest point, children, you can be faithful. You can be faithful to God. You can be found faithful. Joseph was accused. The very first thing they're going to do is run and tell. They're going to tell this and they're going to tell that and they're going to add a bunch more paragraphs that ain't even in there. Mm -hmm. And that's what they do for the Lord. Because they got to get people on their side against you that that whatever takes place, that they'll throw you out of the church or throw you off the 
Uncle Ted or, uh, you know what I mean, anything to stop stop that purpose for your life. Right. And you ain't done nothing. Have you ever been lying on me? You ain't done nothing. No. Oh, yeah. If you've not been, you're going to be. Anyway, part of the first brand. And because of them, she's up for show. Because of his reputation, being the big person that he was in the in the uh, palace, he had to take action. It hurts children to be hurt and misused. You can't tell me that the top man that Joseph was that he wasn't hurt. But I'm going to tell you, God will fight your battle. If you've read on, you know that God fought his battle. Yes, he he had a beautiful show. I'm going to tell you, we have not walked through this thing that God has not fought our battle. Yes. And sometimes the best thing to do is to be quiet and be still and say, Now, God, you know everything about this, and you bring it to life. And he's the best lawyer you'll ever have. Amen. He a Kiva Koshanda. He knows the truth. You know, years and years ago, there was a Sunday school teacher who never had forgot. She told me, she said, no matter what they're saying, never be guilty of what they're saying. Don't, whatever it is, don't you be guilty of it just like him. Because sooner or later, God will bring you out. And, and sooner or later, there'll be people walk up tell, uh, to you and tell you, and if they know that brother, so did the king. Right. But I'm going to tell you, God will fight your battles. And I'm going to tell you, if if they if they stole that, they're going to reap that. Right. And usually the same thing that they're lying on you about or going tells from one place to another, that same thing is going to come out to them and they're going to find themselves in the same position and they're going to know how, how you felt, how hurt you were. And he will judge. He will judge. He will. Galatians 6 and 7. 6 chapter 7 verse. Whatsoever that you sow, you're also going to reap. We're going to reap it. If you show joy and happiness and respect and love and kindness, that's what you're going to read. Yeah. If you, we talked about this way back there in one of the lessons. If you show in to sow any strife, bitterness, and maker, honey, that's what you're going to uh, receive. And if nine times out of ten, when you go into churches uh, and you see somebody that don't have no joy uh, and you get, and, and they're just, their face looks so worn out and so frazzled there's something going on there that ought not to be going on now because the Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. There's happiness in Him. Amen. I don't care where you're walking tonight. I'm telling you there's happiness in Him. Oh, yes. And there's happiness in His promises. Yes. And every one of them can be yours if we'll keep the favor and keep, yes. keep our hearts and spirits right with Him. Uh, Matthew 7 and 1 it talks about not judging. I cannot judge a, a Sister Betty or Sister Donna. I can't judge them with a righteous ju uh, judgment. I cannot do that. Because I'm not the worthy one. He's the worthy one. He's the one that shed his blood. And he's the only one that is supposed to be able to judge you. Yeah. Yet though we find many judges all over the country in every place, uh, this, 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 this. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Rest assured, in that final day, honey, he will judge. Yeah. And it won't be, it will be without the key of shine it will be without that. And it won't be without, it will be without favor, honey. He's no respecter of person and people will get what is coming to them. I've always told my children, be careful what you say. There's a little tongue. Say, be careful, little lips, what you say. Be careful, little eyes. What, I mean, little eyes, what you see. Little ears, what you hear. And little hands, what you do. And little feet, where you go. Honey, that's a little song that we can pat on our lives at. Wow. I think about that a many and a many a time. And if we will pay attention to this, the simple thing, it will help us along our way. Through it all, children. Let's trust God, just like Joseph did. Yeah, we, I done talked 
that Joseph going in prison? He was thrown in there with the other prisoners. I don't know what they look like. I would imagine they're mean. I would say, we'll throw you over here in the jail. There's a bunch of mean people over there. I, I don't know. I, I didn't. I have I have studied on dungeons and stuff when I was uh, studying some on Paul. And it talked about when Paul, you know, was in prison. And uh, it said, you know, it's not like that you walk into a place where it's been mocked. Uh, and it's not like you walk into a place that maybe somebody's used some lifestyle. Uh, but oh, those old dungeons were cold uh, and they would drip from water. And they said there was rats in there. Uh, uh, big enough probably, you know, I'd say to carry you off. Uh, but I'm just saying, uh, it was no it was no bowl of cherries or, or a, a, a whatever. It wasn't, wasn't, you know, wasn't something that I want to be. But yet, without over a lie, this, this is what he had to deal with. Genesis 40, uh, 41 and 14, there's scripture concerning that. And according to Psalm 105, 18, he, he, his imprisonment was painful. Yes. Joseph found favor in prison. Even though he's in prison, yes. he found favor. And that's in verse 23. He prospered in slavery. And even though he was in prison, he prospered. You know, sometimes we have to make the best I have seen people go down, 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 the Lord take a day. And I have seen God move in their lives, and I tell you, marvelous. Trust God. Do your best and know in your heart you have been obedient to Him. And then I want it, I, how many more minutes do I have? About 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I'll catch up as quick as I can. Joseph's dreams and Genesis 41 and 1 through 8. Do you wonder why he dreamed? Do you wonder why Pharaoh dreamed? Pharaoh hmm. really wasn't a godly person. He tried to serve many gods. Do you wonder why? I'm going to tell you what I believe. And this is me. This He was part of the plan to get Joseph. He was part of God. Have, have you ever had a drunkard come up to you and give you money uh, and give you an offering to doubt or something when somebody else wouldn't do it? That was, you know, have you? Yeah. He opened the door for God's purpose for Joseph's life, Genesis 40. And the first dream he had, he dreamed about seven healthy cows and seven starving cows. And in seven heads of well-filled grain on the sky, and seven withers destroyed by drought and hot desert wind. There was nobody around that could interpret these dreams. But after two years, think about this, children. How long have you been going through this thing? How long have we went through this this year? Two years. And he wasn't guilty, remember? The butler remembered. There was a reason for that two years. Sometimes God comes by instant. Sometimes it's two or three months. Sometimes it's a year. In this case, it was nearly two. It took 13 years, like I said earlier, to get through the purpose for his life. Dreams do come to pass. God does things on his time table, not ours. Give God all the credit. He gave, first of all, Joseph gave God the credit that he was able to do this. If you have gifts, and in the last days, you know, we're going to dream dreams, and the handmaidens, you know, are going to prophesy, yes. and, and, and visions, we're going to see visions, you give God the credit for that. Don't you, know, you ever, don't you ever think that you can steal not one thing from God? Honey, it's through the mercies of God that we're even breathing, let alone Him say, you know, I, I'm going to let you have this gift and you just obey me in it. Right. But I always do like Joseph did. But anyway, the dreams were showing. Seven years of plenty.
seven years of famine. And and we need we you know we need to like I was saying seek God's glory and not our own. Always make sure that He has the glory and the honor. And we can have favor with Him. He will say, Well good. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. I don't know if you, but that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear, Matthew 25, 21. And Joseph's advice to Pharaoh, he used some wisdom. He wasn't the 17 year old boy that we started out with. He gave him some godly advice how to help save and put up the grain and stuff in, in the tide of plenty that he could be able to feed in the time of the famine. And I'm going to tell you, God deals with us today to, to say, I'm saying, give yeah, that it shall be given unto you, but there's nothing to, uh, wrong with going to the store and if you find a side of something on sale, you put three back in case somebody else needs some, or you do at a later day. But ask of God if you need wisdom and knowledge. James 1 and 5, know the Lord, study the Word. 2 Timothy 2.15 Guard what you say. Make sure it blesses somebody. Just, just don't say it if it don't, you know, if, 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 and, and it takes guard in your mind. Right. It takes guard in your own spirit. And, and, and that's what he had to do. No good comes out of something that's not done God. No good. Joseph was made ruler of Egypt, and I'm fixing to wind this down. Genesis 41, 37, and through 46, we'll talk to you about that. Verse 38, that Joseph should be distributor over the vine. It took, like I said, over 13 years. God changed Joseph's life. Remain loyal to God and baptize as well as good. And remember the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. And go on through that and study that. If you and I remain faithful, God will see us through. He will, will not fail you. And like I said, after 13 years, if you go on and study and read, you'll see poor Joseph married and had, had a couple of uh, sons and so forth and so on. But I don't know about you, but I think this has been good. It's been food for my sister. Has anybody got anything to say?